So the next step is going to be adding some really cool volumetric fog to our scene using fog volume three. So I'm just gonna kind of get my scene view lined up here so that I can see what I wanna see. And I'm just doing that by holding down right click and using WASD to fly around. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the fog volume menu and choose create, you guessed it, fog volume. You can close the prefab manager. And we can see a fascinating gray box appears in our scene. And so the first thing we're gonna do is set its size. So I'm gonna set it to be at about 100 along the X, the X being the main kind of axis that we're moving along. Let's set it to maybe 60 on the Y, so it's nice and tall, and maybe 60 across, so that it kind of covers a good, good size chunk of our scene. And then we're just gonna move it over a little bit along the Z or Z axis, and just make sure that stuff is kind of inside it. We'll move it back a little bit. So it's just kind of covering covering our scene. Now, right away, it looks pretty cool, right? If we're just going for like white out snowy conditions, right? But we want something that's a little more, a little more subtle and nuanced. So the first thing that we're going to do is, so the UI for the fog volume changes based on what options you have available. So right now it's just visibility uh, and we can just adjust the visibility, right? And I mean, just look at that. It looks pretty good already. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some noise. And when we turn on the noise, the color is going to change to light energy. We're going to get this volume fog option and a bunch of the UI is going to change. So don't bother setting anything until you've kind of got your basics turned on. So the noise is really key here because the noise is what's going to allow us to create these sort of volumetric wisps, right? So let's start by turning on the noise. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the light energy from our skybox, right? So we're going to kind of use the skybox as a reference. And let's just play around with the color. I think this is a kind of nice sort of desaturated bluish grayish color that I think fits pretty well. And so the next thing that we want to do, we can scale it a little bit, right? So this just is kind of basically the tiling for the noise pattern. I want to scale it up a little bit so that our uh, pattern is a little larger and less obviously repetitive. And then we're going to turn on the swirl deformer. So this is a lot like adding a swirl filter in Photoshop. If you ever did that, we can turn it way up and see what it looks good. Let's get zoomed out so we can see the whole thing. And let's try to get like a kind of a diagonal view so we can see how 3D this is. So this is a lot like applying a swirl filter in Photoshop, right? You can, you can kind of see it happen. Now we're just going to do a little bit and we're not going to swirl around the Z axis, which is the default. We're going to swirl around the X so that it's kind of swirling left to right around the scene. And we're going to animate that. We're going to turn up the rotation speed just a little bit. And we can actually see this in the scene view. Right, so it's slow, it's subtle, but it's just giving it that little bit of movement and dynamism that I think really adds a lot. Of course, we could do some rotation, but in this case, I think just having a little bit of, like some starting rotation, but I think having a little bit of uh, movement there is really, really nice. Now, of course, we can play around with the coverage, right? How much of this do we want? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit on the heavy handed side here just because we want to really see this effect because this is what we're doing. We can play with the contrast, right? So this is basically processing the, no the generated noise. I'm just really seasoning to taste here, right? This is really up to you guys how much or how little of this you want to have. I'm going to go a little on the heavy handed side just so we can really see it happen. Now, this is an interesting one, octaves, right? This is how many, how much noise we're going to generate. And you can see it really changes the look of the noise. If we go to two octaves, this opens up this other section here of curl and this detail layer, right? So we can also play around with this and get some more complex, interesting stuff. Probably uh, two octaves is enough, but of course you can mess with it. But the curl 
option adds just like a really other interesting layer of detail and just makes the kind of tiled repetitive nature of the fog like a little less obvious and a little more complex so i kind of like that now the other thing that we can add is a little bit of straight up regular volume fog right which is just like sort of traditional fog that we would think of and what we'll do is we're just going to turn the visibility on that pretty low right like let's go for i want to just see it affecting the mountains a tiny bit this is not a scene with a lot of distance in it so that those are kind of the cases where your fog really benefits if you have like a bunch of objects receding into the distance but let's just turn this let's not go too heavy-handed with it but let's just see it so that it's affecting the rocks down at the end of the little street there a little bit and giving us a little bit of a, a feeling of depth right with the with this atmospheric haze all right so that i think looks pretty nice let's go maximize on play and let's give it a try there we go all right so now we can see, right, we've got this nice haziness on the rocks, our lovely snowy vibe. And I just really love these kind of romantic, misty, foggy scenes, right, with the depth of field. And let's fade out our, uh, our snow. And this is what it looks like pre-snow. Pre and then we click the mouse and it starts to snow. Uh, and we can see everything building up and getting all pretty and snowy. I just, I love the way it interacts with these rocks. I guess it's the normal maps on these rocks, but it just looks so good on these um, irregular surfaces. The flat surfaces look good, but I feel like the more detailed surfaces really take the snow nicely. And also these kind of slopes and stuff, the roof as well is just so pretty with the ridge lines and the snow. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, that is the three awesome assets in the Unity Art and Design Essentials Pack. Uh, if you're curious about the other assets, uh, we've got a live training coming up on the 2D Pack, which is going to be really great. My colleague Mike Geig is going to be delivering that. And we also have some existing trainings, uh, one about the mobile essentials by my colleague Adam Buckner and one by Dan Miller about VR essentials. So I'm Matt Schell. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do check out the essentials pack, which you get if you subscribe for Unity Pro or Unity Plus as a monthly subscription. You'll get that as a free gift. And yeah, thanks again for watching. See you next time. Bye.